Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today I'd like to talk about the liminal experience. Do we have another slide, Brenda? Today I'd like to talk about the liminal experience. The liminal experience can also be talked about the transition time, the neutral zone, and those kind of things, but people like to have nice fancy words to explain things. So it's the in-between time, the emotional dislocation. So in our, in our screen there, uh, it's, the, it's between the no longer and the not yet. So the no longer is the things in the past and the not yet are the things coming up. There's a lot of different responses that people have to this in-between time, this liminal experience. Most people, a lot of people, I shouldn't say most, a lot of people get angry and because they're anxious, they're worried because the things of the past are not there and, and they're not settled into the, what's coming yet. And so uh, there's a lot of anxiety and a lot of anger that comes from it. And so some people try to go back to the past, try to recreate what happened in the past, try to make things like it was in the past because that's when they felt secure and comfortable. Some people like to move forward and are excited about the new and are looking forward to the changes and are looking forward to what can happen in the future. And some are just frozen. Some are just frozen, not knowing what to do, not knowing which way to go. So let me give you a couple of examples. The first is, at the end of June, my wife and I sold our house, and we started on the road. And we had absolutely no idea where we were going to land. That was before we heard from you guys. That's called liminal space. We had left the past behind. I had retired from that congregation. We had no idea where we were going. So we were just on the road, on the road, not knowing where we're going. So we took off cross country. And even now, people ask where we're going to go next. And when we say we have no idea, people go like, ah, how can you not know where you're going next? You see, that's the liminal space. That's liminal. Our nation is in liminal, style, liminal time. A lot of things that were just assumed that you kind of knew when you were growing up that this is just the way things were, are no longer. We have not yet come to a place where we as a culture, we as a nation, we as have settled onto something. And so as a nation, we're in liminal space, liminal time, liminal experience. And so you see the anxiety, you see the fear, you see the anger, because we're in this in-between space, this in-between time. And so the next slide, and so the next slide is like that. You've let go of your security, and you're flying through space, and hopefully you'll get caught on the other side. Liminal space, liminal time, liminal experience. We don't know how this is all going to end up. And the reason I talk about that is because in our reading today, that's where the disciples were. That's where the disciples were. Jesus, whom they'd followed for three years, whom they had, turned, they had given up their families, their work, their experience, they had given it all up to follow Jesus, and then he dies, and then he rises again, for goodness sakes, and then he leaves them and ascends to heaven. So everything that they had based their life on was gone. And the future had not yet been revealed to them. The where they were going had not yet been revealed to them. So here they are in their liminal time, in their liminal space, in their liminal experience between the resurrection and Pentecost. And you can imagine their anxiety their frustration, their feeling of abandonment. You can imagine all those feelings going on. Jesus didn't instruct them to do anything except to wait. God gives us liminal times for a, for, for a purpose. These are times of transition, times of change. Allow us to let go of the past, allow us to trust him, and allow us to move forward toward the future to be ready for the next thing that God has in store for us. It's true in our personal lives, we experience these things personally, but we also experience these things corporately or as a nation. In our liminal time, we see in our reading Acts today, there's some things that happen. First off, 
They are told to wait. They are told to wait. Now I'm going to go back to Luke 24 for this. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. Notice what he says, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power up on high. You know there's a saying? Stay, wait. One of the hardest things to do in life is to wait, right? Waiting is very difficult for us. And yet, that's what Jesus told the disciples. Wait. Stay. And that's hard. That's hard. Second thing they did was they prayed. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying. All these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. So while they were waiting, they were praying. Prayer. Prayer is an important, an important thing to do, especially in liminal times. When we're in between, we're waiting for God, like God is, we're waiting for the Spirit, when we're waiting for God to lead us. Prayer. Pray. And then the third thing that's happening here is the transition of leadership. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of persons was in all about 120. So Peter stands up. So Jesus was their leader. He's gone. As far as they were concerned physically, he's gone. And so Peter stands up, and we have leadership taking place. And then he says, okay, wait, Judas is gone. Judas Iscariot is gone. We know what happened to him. Pretty gruesome. We know what happened to him. So Peter says, okay, let's elect somebody to take his place. What's interesting is how they did the election. First off, they did the criteria, what's important to us. And so they came up with two names. And then they drew names out of a hat. That's how they did it, because they were trying to trust God's Holy Spirit. And, and so during this liminal time, there was also a transition of leadership. A transition of leadership. And so they were told to wait. They prayed, and there was a transition of leadership. Fountain of Life is in a liminal place right now, if you haven't figured it out. Clearly, your previous pastor had retired. Brenda is leaving. So we are in a transition time, which can cause anxiety, and anxiety sometimes causes fear, and fear sometimes causes anger. But while we're in this transition time, what do we need to do? Wait on God, pray, and participate in the transition of leadership. See, one of the dangers of liminal time, which we see in our nation, is fear and panic and anger. So Jesus addresses this with a prayer in John 17. As Jesus prays in John 17, and John 17 is, is as Jesus goes to Calvary, as Jesus is about to leave them by, being, by dying on the cross, he prays for them. He prays for them. And he prays for us as well, as in his prayer. His prayer for his disciples is prayer for us, his disciples. So he prays. 
And here's part of that prayer this morning. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them, and have come to know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. So he prays for disciples, and he promises that they're not going to be abandoned, and he promises that they're not going to be forgotten, and he promises that they're not going to be left. He doesn't promise that everything's going to go nice and happy and fun and all that. He never promises them prosperity, but he promises that he will be with them always to the end of the age. When you find yourself in a liminal experience, and this happens in many ways in life, in any times of transition, if you lose a job or you move or um, you, graduate from, you graduate from college or high school or whatever, times of transition are often liminal periods in our lives. Paul tells the story of, uh, of several liminal experiences in Paul's life. One of them is he's trying to, to go to the province of Asia to spread the gospel, and for some reason doors keep getting closed. And then he has the vision of the man from Macedonia, so he goes to Macedonia and starts a whole new ministry. The old saying, when God closes the door, he opens another one. Sometimes those are liminal experiences where God is redirecting us. So, the, so that was one of his many liminal experiences. So when we are in a liminal experience, a few things to remember. First, don't be afraid and don't react out of fear. Don't be afraid and don't react out of fear. Second, Know that God is with you, and you are not abandoned. Third, pray for God to comfort you and to lead and direct you. And then fourth, look forward to what God is going to do next in your life. Don't be afraid. Trust God. Pray. And then look forward to what God's going to do next. This can be in your life personally, or it can be in our life together, corporately. Please stand for prayer. Lord God, we thank you that you have loved us, that you've promised to be with us always. There are times in our lives when we do feel abandoned, when we do feel wandering aimlessly, when we do feel like we don't know where we're heading. Help us in those times to know that you are with us, that you love us, that you care for us. Help us to know in those times that you have a future for us and that you will guide and direct us. We pray that you will help us to follow your guiding. Help us in those times to trust you and not to be anxious and afraid and angry. But help us to know that you are with us, to guide and direct us. And then help us to look forward to what you have in store for us. We pray in your name, Jesus. Amen.